So this is just this is germane to what we've just been talking about, right? This so this is a big problem. We haven't we've just skated over this in our work on Twitter. So how do you separate um, the bots and the and the humans, the actual humans, the different kinds of humans, and then you know corporations and institutions and so on. So this is a this is a study and there's some stuff in here. Scaling laws, you know all about these things. Plots, plots, plots. Where are the scaling laws? These are pretty hideous looking things, but the claim is that these are managed accounts, so that you know that's everything from you know UVM to New York Times to, to whatever, and these are bots, and these are people. So and then there's some detail. So this is a bit of a this is their you know, very bursty activity. It's the power spectrum actually, and then this is um, this is the this is the uh, the delay between what have they got? The intertweet delay, standard deviation versus the mean. So you know, there's one way of dragging this out. You can get this. There are different characters to them. So, you, of course, you need. I mean, this is fair enough. You need a lot of samples of any. Anyway, I mean, even just a person you meet in the street. If they say one thing to you, that's not a good thing to. I mean, it can help you a lot and tell you know, tell you a lot about them. But it's really, it's good to have you know, many more data points. Of course, we react to one data point. But this is a pretty interesting piece of work. Maybe I think a, a little. I mean, maybe you'd expect this in some ways, but. Um, Scaling laws, you guys know all about. All right. We will have more about scaling laws. Okay, so that's kind of cool. So, um, all right, so I wanted to finish some stuff here about uh, scale free networks, this giant, giant you know, uh, area of complex networks that you're all super excited about. Um, once again, not everything is a small world network, not everything is a scale free network. You see, this is what happens, right? We get very excited about this. I see people do this all the time. Um, how can I impose my model on reality? Is basically what's happening. Oh, stop it. The origin, the originators do that for a little while, and then it's really kind of the people that come after the acolytes that, that do the do the real damage. You know, because the people who invented it, they're like, yeah, I know, I know, it doesn't apply to everything. Um, <clears throat> okay, that's good. Yeah. So we'll finish networks, and then we're under contagion. There's a lot of good stuff, right? So spreading, universal phenomenon. All sorts of things, from just simple diffusion, right, to spreading of crazy rumors and things, um, religions, and political beliefs, and all sorts of stuff, right, at the, at the highest level. Okay, diseases, of course, good stuff to spread. Okay. So we got to the, we finished, uh, we finished this calculation as was performed in this science paper, and we, the, the result that pops out is we get a degree distribution from this rich gets richer growth model. It's different to the Simon model. There's not a that you're always getting a new guy, right? Every time there's a new guy, there's not this probability of a new flavor emerging or something like that. So it's a slightly different thing. Um, of course, it's with networks, but the Solar Price did the network version of Simon's model. Uh, they get a very specific exponent, k to the minus three. That's it. Right. And we reflected on this a little bit. That's a, this is an interesting exponent. It's at the end of this range that we know happens uh, occurs a lot. The things that we find. Um, interesting you know, in that they have surprise, so the mean is finite because we're between two and three. It's just on the cusp of where the variance becomes controlled and subdued. Okay, okay. <clears throat> so, so it's at a bit of an edge. But if you go back to the original plots, they had, let's see, so the numbers are 2.3, 2.1, and 4. So this is now you know, understood to be not at all a scale for network. Um, <clears throat> one could you know, argue with just the mechanism of growth and so on, but that's uh, even at the, the level of this kind of output degree distribution, it doesn't seem to match. So these aren't really matching up with three, right? They're not, this is really a long way off in terms of exponents. I mean, two, three, they're not picking up, they're huge, they're huge discrepancies. Right, so a bunch of others that people, you know, people have measured all sorts of things. There's, Words, if you, if you, depending on how you do it, if you get a synonyms of words from various kind of data sets. Um, the web depends if you look at in degree and out degree, if you look at email, in, in and out, you get different things, and in fact, you get things that aren't really parallel. Yeah, that's from a while back. Um, uh, so, of course, to, to, to distinguish between the web and the internet, right? we, you often hear them said in the wrong way, right? The internet is the physical thing, the web sits on top. Uh, the internet is, uh, it actually turns out to be kind of a hard thing to get a whole picture of. That's tricky. People still argue about it. How do you actually, you'd think we would just have a whole picture of it. Just the same as the, the grid, the power grid. You'd think we'd just have that in a box and you can simulate stuff on it and so on, but we have these tiny little ones, maybe pollen or something. Right? It's 
really ridiculous. Um, you know, we're talking about big data. We're, we're definitely missing some big data sets, which just seems like they're sitting up there. Uh, so, there's a, a problem you're working on now. Right? So, let's just take this model and start changing things around, and some very natural things to add in the context of networks. So, edge deletion, node deletion, right? So, things can live and die. Um, uh, you have rewiring of edges, right? You change your friendships as you go along. You could talk about directed networks. Uh, and then there's this really fundamental question that goes through all of these things, right? It's a big, big science question, um, just in general. Is, is, there, is that free a universal thing? If you start mes messing around with these guys, you know, these other possible mechanisms, if you do something else, if you tune it a little bit away microscopically, does that free, is that free robust? Now, you, you, you have insight to this already. The Simon's model is a different thing, right? Simon's model is a slightly different setup, but it's still rich gets richer, but we know with Simon's model there is a dial, which is the probability that the next node or the next entrant into the whole system is new, is a new flavor, for example, it's an elephant of a new, new color, or it's a new city has started, or it's a word that you haven't seen before. Um, so we know that, and we know that that's a dial, that actually works, right, so we get this tunable thing, so we'll come back to it. But this structure, maybe you know, maybe you're kind of in a box, like you move away from this microscopic mechanism a little bit, and you don't change things. And actually, I remember asking Farazi this the Coyote Cafe, but I don't think it exists anymore in Santa Fe. They said this; they had this new uh, this paper. Anyway, you, you guys are actually working on that problem right now. So it turns out there are ways to change it that don't do anything. That you still get the minus three. So you're like, okay, maybe it is universal. And you're like, ah, oh, you know, this is very exciting. Um, everyone, so physicists love universality, but it's a very, very, very exciting. Like, if there's a model, you can mess around in lots of ways, and look, everything is the same. It's great. It's the, they're, they're hunting after it all the time. Okay. They're just making up models that have no applic you know, applicability to reality, because they just want to make up some interesting models. Um, this is a string theory type people. Okay, so, <laughs> I'm not going on, guys. They're off. I don't know what's going on. So, uh, you know, it, I mean, we, we've talked about this, right, but the, the whole, you know, we're interested in how things fit together as we go up. You know, you got the Higgs boson, right? So that's pretty cool, but no one cares how many Higgs bosons you have inside you. The conductor is never going to say your Higgs boson level is going to so great today. Well, the box of Wheaties, which will have all sorts of stuff on the outside, will never say, you know, more quarks than the other guys, right? It just doesn't. We're, we're above that level. We do still say ridiculous things. We say, you know, this one has more you know, carbs or whatever, but it's still stupid. But at least we don't say quarks. All right, gluons, gluons. Not enough gluons in your milk. Okay. Okay. You, oh, this one has charm quarks, right? That would be great. The strange quark. This is a strange quark. Um, you know, cornflakes. That would be great. Higher levels of charm. Now enhanced with subatomic sugar. <laughs> Yeah, it's just insane. Anyway, I'm sure if we could market that, we would All right. <laughs> Have you had enough left on this morning? Okay, so. <laughs> silly. Okay, so, but, you know what we, we like this. All right, I digress. So do we need this preferential attachment thing? I mean, it, you know, you can make other models that produce scale for example, you can make artificial ones. This is you know, what happens over and over again. Things grow, they, you know, and, and the rich gets richer, probably is all over the place. Um, and the model details might matter, so let's see. Um, so here's, a, here's another problem, so that was, you know, okay, we've got to the end of the mechanism, we'd like to play around with it a little more, but if we get back, on, back to it, there's, there's something that's uh, sitting there that's a bit of a problem, which is this preferential attachment mechanism means that you have to know everything about the network. Right? So you can't, there's a sense of, the word random sounds good, because it's like, oh, random, like we're just going to roll a a die, right? But that's, in fact, you have to roll a very, very complicated, many-faceted die that you have, in fact, just made up for this particular circumstance. Because you come in, there are 130 nodes already, this one has 10 connections, this one has 3, and the probability of connecting them is proportional to their degree, right? So you have to add up all the degrees, and then 10 divided by the sum of degrees, 3, so you make your funny die, and it's weighted in some way, and you roll it, and then, right? So that's weird, that's, a, that's a, actually quite hard. It's different to just randomly bumping into a node. So you think it would be more reasonable if you only allowed them to see like a sub network? So you could do that where they see a portion of the network. I mean, how do you like a, a close in some sense yeah. portion? 
So the nice thing about the Simon model, you know, which obviously is artificial as well, I'm um, looking control, is that, um, seriously, oh, uh, is that uh, you actually just randomly connected with one person. If you think about the city version, for example. So you just have, you're randomly connected to one person, and then you go and live in their city, but then you're, you're part of that group. Right? So you're not selecting by groups. So if you did that, if you selected by the size of the city, you're like, okay, that's a big, which you could kind of imagine is also plausible, like you can sort of see them, that's sort of how it looks for New York City. Um, and I think it is an interesting problem, like how, how do people actually end up in small of those? Um, then, anyway, but at least that, that's more like you just randomly know a person, and then the group thing comes afterwards. This is knowing that this is randomly connecting to a group because a node is, you're connecting to a node based on its size. Okay. So, how do you do that? So, one thing is to, um, okay, so I just said this, uh, blah, blah, blah. So, it's a pretty strong assumption of, of what you know, node capacity is. So, we can do something quite simple. And that's, um, you first of all just let nodes to attach randomly. Right? And there's a very odd property of, of networks that, that comes into play. So, so now they're going to randomly attach to the network, and then they're going to attach to some of the, that, so they randomly attach to a node in the network, so it's just random, and they're going to attach to some of their friends, which is also quite natural. Right? So there'll be a little closure, if you like, triadic closure, not closure at the end of your your meaningful <coughs> relationship. So you join this one, this is step one, this person has a bunch of friends, and then you add these extra, maybe add a few extra links like this. So that's pretty benign. It's a pretty non-stressful you know, kind of thing. Uh, so this can be done randomly, and <coughs> something we'll go into more with contagion. Uh, the probably that you, that, so, so if this, this character out here has K friends, then a, this is a sort of roughly true. Then the chance of, and you know, thinking about this as being relatively random, the chance of getting to them from, along this link is, is now that the K comes into play there. Right? So you're, the thing about this character is it has strange friends. So this character has, uh, this has degree distribution of piece of K. Right? So sample K from P of K. For this guy, so this is the new character. Right. This one over here, though, is or any of these is it comes from a just their degree can be you can think of it being sampled from a different distribution, and it's actually this QK, which is KPK, and we have to normalize it so it's the sum of JPJ J. J. Um, which, if you think about this, this is actually the average degree on the bottom. So there's a there's a, a k right you multiply because there are k ways to get to that no there are more ways to get there right so think about this connection in here you're connecting to this other friend of theirs this is not just like randomly finding someone anymore now they they're augmented in their ability to be found so they have k ways of getting to them. lots of ways of getting them. so um, that's a nice piece. So you can actually figure out that your friends on average have more friends than you, which is really, really disappointing. Um, which explains the Facebook stress, I guess. Um, so, but we'll come, we'll come back to this. It's a, it's, so it's a big deal. It really it, it defines how contagion works. So contagion is very strange on this scale for numbers. It's awful to explore. It, and it's to do with... Uh, what you might intuitively think works um, fails kind of very nicely. Okay, all right, we'll cover that. So you can see you can build this rich gets richer model out of just kind of random attachment. So this is not a rich get, doesn't, so you can specify a model that's not rich gets richer in the sense that it's just, you're just randomly attaching it, you're just jumping into the network and you're randomly attaching someone and then I'm friends with all these And then manifest a rich gets richer. So, um, so that's good. Uh, okay, okay. So this is this is yeah. So this is a uh, this is the hashtag this point that your um, friends have more friends. But we'll we'll get to that get to that later on. So it's really about if you're selecting nodes from a network, are you going to select them the nodes like just put all the nodes in a box and pull out one node at a time, or are you going to jump on the edges, which is 
many times a much more natural thing to do. It's much more natural to think about edges, actually, than for networks. A lot of calculations are much easier. Jump on an edge, and then, so you, you just jump on your network, you jump on an edge, and then you randomly you throw, flip a coin and you run one way. The nodes that you end up with, at, with that selection, will have, on average, more friends. So, for instance, you miss anyone who doesn't have any friends. Okay. I was just wondering, like, what, what does it mean to jump on an edge? Like, maybe, you know, the nodes are two different people, and maybe, like, showing up to a party where they're all at, or something like that? Like, Look, what does that mean for this friendship? Um, I see what you mean. So you have to somehow, you have to see the friendship, right? I mean, you could think about it like that. You might if you yeah. had some mechanism for seeing a list of all friendships instead of people. So it would be people. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, is that realistic? Mechanically, you know, like, you know, from an algorithmic point of view, it's fine. Um, well, this is, I mean, this is a way of, of getting it to, to work, right? As you start to move through a network, then you get this property starting to pick up. Because now, you, now you're <clears throat> in training in the, in the edges. But for diseases spreading, absolutely, this is really, or anything spreading through networks, this is what happens. It starts to get into, it moves away from just pure node selection, which might be the first thing. You know, someone walks in and says, hello, what is this thing I'm meeting? It's full of Ebola. And then they walk back and say, you know, hello, right? I mean, so that's the nodes, a random bad thing happened, and then now it's like they walk back and like, hello, 30 friends, you know. Now you're at the edge but that's, situation. But that's still going to 30 <laughs> different connected nodes rather than saying hello, random two people I see the first part, walking together. Yeah, the first part is more different, but that's what, it's a sort of bad thing that kind of places like Facebook might want to do. Because they have that data. Could you imagine ever getting it? Um, let's think. I mean, you can see friendships, though. I mean, you, you might be, you know, like these, you see these people as friends, and then you go and get them as a pair. Like, or you, so you, you approach them as a pair in some way, right? You know, maybe you are seeking to expose them to your wonderful religion, for example, and you decide, you know, you end up with a new plan. Like, instead of finding people who are sitting by themselves, and you know, that's the ones you can kind of, you feel like you might approach, like maybe you're a bit, you start to have a new plan and you go for groups of two. And then you, you know, you're into it. Um, you can do good things. Well, well, I mean, it depends how you feel, but, but yeah. If it's your religion or not. Yeah? That's interesting, yeah. But it does, it does lead you to start thinking of evil things. But, um, uh, does it happen in a natural way? I, I mean, I think you see friendships, right? You just see them. So it doesn't mean that you go in and mess with them necessarily, but interact with them, but you just, it, it's a, it, it exposes those people in a certain way. <laughs> There's also something where, I know that this is just sort of another thing, where you can have, so where do, you know, new things come from, like innovations. I mean, sometimes it can be a way to, so think, think of, uh, Ways of speaking, for example. So someone might misinterpret what someone else says and thinks this is a now a cool way to say. It. So that's sort of happening on an edge. It's an accident of an edge. And then they walk off and tell their friends that this is the way so we have interactions, potentially more than spark. Yeah. friendships, interactions might be a way of thinking about. Well, and that's true, yeah. I mean that's the, I mean that's what happens, because it's a sequence of it's a sequence of interactions, right? And that's actually what, you, of course, you measure out of this remote sensing that we do, right? From Twitter, or if you could get email. Or Those are all interactions. They're pings. Not people themselves. They're pings back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, well, you might have demographics as well, but but it's, but yeah. The, so you're not really. So the network, and now of course people are just getting to this. We've talked about this a little bit, but um, the network is in fact you know just all these little pings. And you kind of go off for a while and come back on. And So it's a, it's a, yeah. And then, you know, we're not talking about weighted networks or any of those things, but this is a nice thing. Okay, a little bit uh, to finish this section, and then I'll go on to it more. Um, I think, you know, overall, you know, sophisticated uh, uh, analysis of, of this rich gets richer mechanism for networks by uh, Kropivsky and Redner. This is also, this is Albert, and a few others, I think, that are as well. 
for a few others, this is 2000. Nature, I mean, it's kind of a field date back then, you know, getting your network papers in, in these big, uh, big journals. Um, so this was a pretty, you should, you, I want to show you, it's a pretty simple story, it's a good setup, right? So the two, so we have our straw, our straw person, our straw entity, which is uh, the edge ready random networks, which, which we've talked about, right? So pure random networks. I'm not sure where this is exponential, I've cut this straight out of the thing. But let's say this should be plus on, but maybe they, maybe I had that wrong. It's an interesting game, maybe they were doing something bad. Because plus on did not work. Okay. Um, all right, so here's one. And you can see the you know the scale freeness of this one. This, this, I mean, it's not super hub, but uh, there are these little stragglers outside who have one friend. You know, they're like, ah, that's so cool, but they have no other friends to talk about. Um, and uh, yeah, this is a much more kind of messier looking thing. So you might think if you start to attack these different networks, right, this is perhaps a very real one. This one might, you may not see as much in the real world, right? So if you get this guy, then all of this is gonna to start to fall apart. If you get this one, this is all gonna fall apart. And that's really the, that's the, that's what the story is. So let's see if we can get this one to work. So the thing I looked at is network diameter, which I mentioned a while back, but that's the longest, shortest path, right? So you measure all the shortest paths between two nodes, and you find the longest one, and that's some, some sense of diameter, right? Again, not weighted networks. Every link counts in the same way. Uh, and then start, uh, so, that, so we're going to measure diameter, and so you can see the numbers 4, 6, 12, right? So that's reasonable. Here's a real, real world data. This is a, probably the Notre Dame data set again. This is a version of the, the internet, some piece of it. Uh, and this is the artificial data. So the blue symbols um, correspond to random removal, and the, um, right, and, uh, Triangle, it's all sorts of shapes. Uh, so, so there's random failure, and the red ones are attack, where you take away the most connected node, then the second most connected node. So you do the worst you can do, right, if you're going to do a sequential attack. Or you can think of it as failure, right, this failure. The random attack, in some sense, is like a failure. So if you, let's get these right. So this is scale-free with random failure across the bottom. So if, it's, if you have random failure, then the diameter doesn't change much, right? You know Diameter is a bit of a funny measure, and there are other things you could measure here, but that's a bit of a funny thing to measure. You want to measure other aspects, like this, you know, other pieces of that. All sorts of things, clustering, whatever it is. But this is really just going to chop away at this, like, so you've got a scale free distribution. You, you're going to get a lot of these guys, right? There are tons of little guys. You're going to get all these ones. So a lot of plot. On the random one, let's say it's, I guess I said it's exponential, but if, if it's plus one, then you're attacking. So you're going to get a lot of these average ones as well in the middle, and that's actually going to start to hurt it. So that's the edge ring. That's the blue triangles here. Uh, and then, but if you really, if you do target attack, and now we're going to attack here and here, we're going to get the highest, the most connected ones, and the most connected ones. Well, in the scale-free one, the most connected ones are incredibly well connected in principle, right? These ones are not so dramatically different from the average. So in fact, the edge ring one falls apart in the same. Maybe it's exponential, maybe it's just a little. That one falls apart in the same way, whether you target it or whether you just randomly fail things. So it, it's, at least in terms of diameter. Um, whereas the scale free one really goes to bits, right? Which makes sense. You're really taking out big connected pieces. It starts to fall apart. Okay, fine. So, uh, so we have this nice, robust, yet fragile kind of thing. Again, we have another aspect of that. Um, Hubs are a big deal. Now, of course, in real networks, whether hubs are vulnerable or not, you know, can you just simply say the web is you know, this thing where Google is this big hub in the middle? It's really not true, of course, right? Google's this massive distributed thing. Taking it down is incredibly hard. Stopping it, I don't know. Does Google, when was the last time Google had a denial of service attack? That was successful, right? I mean, there was one recently for Amazon, I think, or maybe Amazon blew up itself. <laughs> Actually, I don't remember. Do you know? Do you know what happened? Amazon was down, for, which is pretty huge. Well, Amazon's Amazon gone down. down, but not necessarily from like they've had yeah, I don't, problems I don't think that, that have made Gmail unavailable yeah. to people for but that's a their own amount of time. But that's their own. It's not a tech. 
Twitter blow up a few times early on because I didn't know what they were doing. Divided well, by zero. I couldn't zero. believe they were getting the traffic. What's it? Divided yeah. by zero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Vine so I'm, sure, I'm sure it was some good stuff like that. Isn't Vine it? went down because somebody extended the amount that you could upload from six seconds to like six minutes. Oh, like, they just, they just, for, it, for it like, just went tweet? It, for like a few hours and it just crashed the entire <laughs> site. Because of course everyone started. Everybody uploaded a six minute video. So they're, they're pie cooking for six minutes. <laughs> 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 video cats. Alright, okay, so, um, I look fine. It's pretty good. Okay, so, uh, so they, so yeah, right. So you know, this, this is a nice story. It's just sitting there to be picked off. This is two thousand. Thank you, nature. So it's totally fine. Yeah, we should do this. Um, so yeah, it's 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 a bit bit uh, uh, a, a, a bit of a stretch to uh, to do this to to represent you know, Google as a as a little node in your network and your homepage as a little node as well. That's that's it. Um, so of course the, the, the connected nodes are they're actually really giant nodes in some ways, or they're in fact sub networks of lots of little nodes, right? So Google is some massive spread of computers along the way. So okay, fine. Uh, but tell, you know it's an interesting story. I mean, and, and people will go to this all the time, like the terrorist attacks in 2001. The terrorist network appeared, right? So you've got many people in these connections between them. It's a very it's a very, it's 19 people, so it's a very easy thing to put on a paper, on, on, you know, online, or on TV. But it's a very false representation. Right? Accumulated data, for example, you know, who knows when they interacted, and then there, of course, there are hidden nodes of who connected with them. But, you know, there's sort of an easy thing to start saying, well, if you took this person out, like if someone stopped this person, then the whole thing falls apart. Like, there, what you got? All right. Um, so and then you have to think about the, the targeting and so on. And I could, you know, the flip side of this is not taking things out, but maybe um, you know, from a marketing point of view, coercing a node to behave in a certain way. You pay Oprah to sell your, your pies. Um, I'll talk about them. And uh, you know, or or you know, do something good, right? Spreading good messages. I don't know. Why would anyone want to do that? But um, you could. Uh, so, <laughs> this is for your uh, assignment, but I just want to. Yeah, we'll do it a better way too. Well. Okay. You know what we use on stage, but it's very, very special because if you can see, yeah, the numbers all go to eleven. Look, right across the board, oh. eleven, oh, eleven, and mostly eleven, and then amps go up to ten. Exactly. Does that mean it's louder? Is that any louder? Well, it's one louder, isn't it? It's not ten. You see, most most blokes are going to be playing at ten. You're on ten here, all the way up, all the way up, yeah. all the way up. You're on ten on your guitar. Where can you go from there? Where? I don't know. Nowhere, exactly. What we do is if we need that extra push over the cliff, you know what we do? I put it up to eleven. Eleven, exactly. One louder. Why don't you just make ten louder and make ten be the top? Number and make that a little louder. <laughs> He's going to 11. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do something better. Uh, it's just a pleasure. Um, which, in fact, connects to your assignments, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. So, right. These go to 11. That rhymes with 7, but it's also 11, so it's even more. Uh, last year, last time I had Kevin Bacon, and then you just take off the Kevin. Right? You take off the rhyming bit, so it was a Simon Bacon. Number seven was a Simon Bacon. So that's real rhyme. Yeah. Like, yeah. When you remove the bit that rhymes. That was a bit fun. What's that? It was more of a puzzle. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's just. But that's actually. You know, that's that's how. And then it's just a mess. No one knows what. <laughs> From the outside, you have no idea what anyone is saying. And everything is this kind of weird code. You can't even get a rhyme. For non and there were nonsensical rhymes anyway. So true, a very old one, you know, an English Cockney thing was China plate for your mate, right? So you always talk about your China plate. But in fact, you would never say plate, you just say China. So there's this strange thing of these Cockney characters saying, who's your China? You know, and it's, right? 
Yeah. Um, soldiers bold was cold, so it just becomes soldiers. Um, there are all these old ones, garden, garden hose for the B5. Ridiculous. Okay, the one. Anyway, so uh, yeah, so uh, 11 rhymes with 7, so why don't we use 11? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go through this uh, better goes to 11 uh, version. So it's a couple of years later. I don't know if they're working on the same time, it just took a while, but anyway, very thorough statistical physicist doing good things. Uh, Sid Render is a real, real champion, it's a hero at being a great guy. Um, uh, you know, 60 something now, I think, and, and uh, lots of fantastic work over the years. All right, so we're going to generalize a little bit. We have this version of uh, attachment kernel. We've been, you know, I've put that in. These are the guys that talk about attachment kernels. I put it back in the original work. They're the ones who frame it in that way. Uh, and we'll see how far we get today. But uh, so a sub k, it's going to be now um, instead of just k to the to the one, right? So a linear attachment, which which makes sense. I mean, it's very plausible. It's very plausible, right? That, as I said before, that whole Attach to a node and then meet one of the friends gives you a linear attachment. Problem. So it's a, it is a natural thing. But there could be some details in that attachment. Is it purely linear attachment? Or is it, you know, it could be k plus 2 or k, you know, some, some other things in there. Uh, so they're, they're, they're willing to play around with that as well. But the, in general, to, to uh, add this thing. So if new is greater than 1, then we have a, a kind of a rich get very rich situation. It was less than one, the rich get a little bit more rich. Right? You can dial this up and down. So, um, all right, lots of good things. So they use a rate equation approach, and you'll see that that looks like uh, Simon's model. Uh, but it has all sorts of groovy things. All right, let's see what happens. All right, so we want the number of nodes uh, that have degree k. So this is connecting back to Simon's model. It should feel somewhat similar. And Here's the setup. So we have, right, so the change in the number of nodes of, of type K. So here's the, prob the probability of attachment. Well, it's the attachment kernel for K minus 1. This is um, degree K minus 1. Divided by this normalization, K, uh, A, which I guess I have written down. But it's, uh, <laughs> what's, your, what's it called? Um, one to infinity sort of thing. So, right, so P of K is A of K over A. And this is all time dependent. Right, at a given time, you sum up the. Uh, no, that's right. And there's, this is done like this. Right, so the number of nodes of type k, of, of degree k, the, this is the attachment kernel. Sum this stuff up. Um, that gives you the weight, the whole weight. And you can divide by it to get the probability of attaching to a node of degree k. Okay, so, okay. all right, so this is, this is then the, uh, so this is how many nodes you have of degree k minus 1. This is the probability, this piece here is probably that they, they get uh, linked to, and then they'll increment. And this is a simple thing, I think it's just one edge is coming in. So a new node appears and makes one new friend. So there's no, like, two friends or anything. Just so there, otherwise it would be an M thing. Okay, or you could lose one, right? So a node that has degree k already, so there are n of n sub k of those. This is their probability of being selected by your new node, uh, and you lose one, right? So that's the typical kind of change you'd expect. And then we very nicely, just to clean things up, we now have a, de a chronic delta sitting here. Chronic delta, remember these guys? No. This direct delta is a beautiful thing. And this is with continuous stuff, or, you know, whatever. Um, delta k1, so it's just, so, in general, right, the chronic delta is just this little guy. It's one uh, if i equals j and zero otherwise. Right, so the identity matrix, the ijth entry of the identity matrix is delta ij. So it's actually the identity matrix. Um, and this is a way of kind of writing an algorithm down when you don't. Kind of, yeah. All right. So uh, we have one node, one link, 
is added every time. Uh, so I've described these two guys, so you have all these things. This is the correct normalization. It's the A on the bottom. Um, some initial network that may or may not matter. Um, and there's no way you attach to a node of degree zero. Everyone has a few friends to start with. Okay, so what's going to happen is uh, when k equals 1, so when k equals 1, so we're down at the the chain and the nodes that have one friend. Well, so this um, this will be a zero, and that's what this detail is. A, so this will be one minus one, so this is a zero. This piece falls away. So <coughs> find it like that. So we get this, which is nodes of degree one becoming nodes of degree two. That's that piece, and then uh, we get a one here, because every time every time step a new node appears and it makes one friend. So we're always getting one new node of degree one. So this is just a plus one C. So there's always this steady rate of new nodes coming out. So that's, this thing is zero all the time except when k equals one. And then it just becomes a plus one here. And this piece disappears. So it's a way of, remember we had two equations for the Simon model, this is a way of putting all in one box. So that's the setup. So they go ahead and, and solve this thing in various ways. Um, you know, settle this. Okay, we've we'll settled this. I wrote it there. Blah, 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 blah. I wrote it there. Um, so the Barbara's Albert model, we just have AK equals K. And so this normalization was the sum uh, from K equals 1 to infinity of K times the number of nodes of degree K. So in general, um, we have this business, and we have there's going to be some sneaky things we'll have to do. So um, we saw this before as well. So the normalization at time T, uh, so it's the number of nodes of degree K or k prime, it's a dummy indice here, um, times k prime. So we're adding up right, all the degrees. But we know that we've added one every time step. And there are some initial ones. We're ignoring the initial We're just ignoring them. Right, we're ignoring the initial ones. Right? We're going to ignore the initial ones. But every time we add an edge, we have two ends to it. So the total sum of all the degrees goes up by two. Right? So we have a two tip. This is fine. This is all fine when we have a linear attachment curve. If this is k to the new, the new is not equal to one. This is pretty good. It's a little So we have to we'll deal with that. Okay. This is just to sort of connect back to what we had. How do we get the t to again? Yeah. So uh, every time, so you've got your network. Yeah. And a new node appears and says, "Yay!" and it attaches to someone. So now this this node has a degree. If it had degree k, now there's a plus one for it. It's a plus one here, and uh -huh. this one gets a. Plus one there. It starts off with degree one, so it's a there's one more. Yeah. So when you sum up the, this is, I mean, this is really this is summing up. Uh, because a k equals k, you're actually you're summing up the degree. This is what you're doing. You're summing up the degrees. You go through every node, finding its degree, adding them all up. And the shorthand for doing that is saying, well, if we know how many nodes have degree k, then we just k times that number. That's fine. Yeah, right. right. Otherwise, it'd be sum over, you know, k sub i, i equals 1 to the number of nodes in the system. It's OK. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So every new, there are two ends to every edge. Yeah. Uh, so you get a, yeah. And every time step, you're adding one more edge. So you get two to. There's some initial stuff, right? plus some whatever the little network is you started with. But basically, it's growing. It's too deep. Um, so we can do some nice things. Now we have this. This normalization is really simple, right? So we're just going to put this. What we did for it's the Barabasi thing. So we, we just want to make sure this works. Uh, we'll put a one over two t because there's a there's a different approach. The, right, there's a bit of a messiness to the other one. Uh, we want to look for steady state behavior. You'll remember this. This is very much what Simon did. So um, uh, it's the, the, the number of degree k is going to grow steadily at some point, and it's going to just grow um, as a function of time, linearly. So we can replace all sorts. We can find lots of good things, right? So this is just going to be um, there's a dt dt here. So it's really just n sub k. So this guy disappears. This one will disappear in because the t is going to go away for us. So we get this. We get good things, right? So this derivative just becomes 
n sub k, we get an n sub k minus 1 here and an n sub k here, and there were t's, but they cancel. Okay, so we've done this kind of calculation. This is a Simon model, it was just like this. Uh, there was a detour taken in the Barabasi approach where they didn't do this. They, were, they actually went in a specific, which gave you different results, right? It was a node by node case. You know, the seventh node, the 23rd node. What was their trajectory? This is this approach puts them in classes. It says, let's find nodes of degree 3 and put them all together. Nodes of degree 21, we'll put them all together. Would you say it's the A versus you? <coughs> Gosh, just throw it in my mouth. Okay, so, yeah, so now we import measure theory because, uh, see, it turns out, no, okay. So, uh, we're doing cool thing. So, th there's a little question for you there, and you can figure out that you, know, you get to k to minus 3, you get the same thing, okay? For example. All right, so what happens if we start, so that was fine, we just sort of recapitulated where we were, we, oh, we you know, recover that same result, so what happens if we start messing around with this um, attachment kernel in interesting ways? We're looking for this you know, robustness of this gamma equals 3 situation. Depend, you know, it seems that if we do, if we, certainly if we move this uh, attachment kernel to k to the new, with new not equal to 1, it should really mess things up. So the surprising thing will be that even keeping it linear and just messing around with the linear kernel just a little bit will, in fact, give you every range of these punishes you could imagine as well. It's different. This, it's different in the science model where the where the, you know, the the new guys are um, coming with some rate. That's a different. That's a, that is a different tweak. If you like. So this is going to show that even with a steady rate of new. Nodes that all have degree one, they're all unique you know, in that sense that they fit into the um, k equals one box to start with. Even with that, there are ways to get all sorts of uh, outputs. Okay. Okay, so we're going to play around with this kind of funny, we'll get to these ones later when u is greater than or smaller than one. So we're going to make uh, this guy linear to start with, and then we're going to tweak all the details. Of, we're going to mess around with so instead of having a k equal to k, this is a linear attachment. So the same, uh, the attachment kernel is exactly equal to k. Uh, we're going to just relax it a little bit and say, well, let, let's say as long as it kind of is linear, like it's not growing. And we'll, we can do this in a very, very small way. Um, we had this. So we had this this issue here. This is good. This, this was fine for when k was there. Um, so, yeah, here it is. When the attachment, when the attachment kernel is k, so now we have something that's growing linearly. We're not quite sure about this, right? This is our, our argument was well. There's one more edge coming in each time. Um, and we can see that we're really adding up the we're really adding up the number of edges, right? We're really or two times the number of edges. We're, we're adding degrees. Here we're not really necessarily doing that. There's some sort of tweak in here. It could change in some kind of way. So the assumption is that we don't quite know what we're doing, but we could say that, let's say it grows as mu times t. That it grows linearly. That we're not doing anything horrible. So that allows us to proceed. We're not really quite sure what this should be. See, as soon as we said that this was equal to 2t, we put it back into the evolution equations and we solved it. Everything became simple. We're sort of sneaky assumptions. Right, but everything became simple. But if we don't know what this this normalization is, if we can't put something in there, then we're in trouble. Right? So we know that if it's going to be proportional to t, the the game is on it. So let's do that and see if then we'll come back later. So all right, so we beg for forgiveness later on. So the situation from you know nature or mathematics or measure theory. No, we don't. No big. Okay, so. Um, so we're going to assume this is true again. Let's see, let's see if it holds together. Because we can start to play around with these linear, these things that are ultimately are linear attachment kernels. Uh, so we had all this stuff before. We know that the t's cancel, right? This is nkt that goes away. This is the derivative part. Uh, there's a t here cancels. This is what we had before. We had a two. So now the only change is we have a mu. 
right? This, this normalization on the bottom has gone from A equals 2T. We're, we're, kind of, we're just going to say, okay, well, we're not quite sure, but let's make it mu T and see if we can figure this out. Okay, so we can play around with this. This is okay. This is okay. So we're going to multiply this mu through before it was a 2. And um, it's not so bad. AK plus mu times N sub K. That's, uh, we're going to put these guys together. So there's this blob over here comes over here. Right, so that's that AK there. And there's a mu. We're going to multiply that mu out. So we get that guy there. The mu will also get attached to this one. So we have mu times the chronica delta, K1. And when we've sort of moved everything away, this little piece is just left here. So this is our evolution equation. It's some blob times N sub K, some blob times N sub K minus 1. So now it will depend on the details of these things. Before this was, we would just put, this would end up being K plus 2. Right? We knew this was a 2, this was a K by definition. This is a K minus 1, and from there you can solve it. Uh, you get two cases, right? You have to, it's, it is good to think of two cases. Uh, When k equals 1, so we get this guy still in the game. This is actually just a mu. Uh, when uh, k equals 1, this piece just disappears because definition, there's no, right, you can't attach to this thing. So k equals 1, we have a 1 here, and 1 here, so we're going to put this down underneath, underneath that mu. So this is the starting, this is what we, this is the expected number as this whole thing evolves. Right, that, so we, of course it's n k equals um, N1, uh, NKT. That's what we're expecting. This, this is the uh, you know, this proportional quantity here. So we've got N1 equals little n1t. Okay. So that's actually that's pretty good. So that's solved. Okay. And when uh, k is greater than one, we get this little growth mechanism here. This is a ratio that depends on this attachment curve. All right. So you can feed things in and it should work out. Right. So if, Two again, two and two, and we have a k here. Oh, sorry, a one, so it'd be two thirds. Get that right. Yeah. Yeah. For the for the case k equals uh, a a the attachment kernel is k, so this would be two thirds, and this would be k minus one. There'd be a two plus k on the bottom, and you could figure it out. Yeah, those gamma function things. Factorials. Okay. Okay. Good. <laughs> yes. So we can look at uh, how this thing behaves eventually for large k. Right? Uh, there's a little problem for you to do that. Maybe from a sum of actually. Okay. Should we give it over a longer period of time? Okay, so, uh, so you can figure this out. You actually end up as a product of all of these blobs. So this should look like our kind of gamma function type thing that happens, right? We always get these. These pieces sitting like this. Um, it's a bit simpler, perhaps, in some ways. Uh, this is so it's, so it's from J equals 1 to K, this is the NK piece. Uh, we have a um, uh, attachment uh, kernel sitting there. We have our mu. So if we have mu equals, this will be 2 over K. This will be 2 over K. The things we could do in there. All right. And you show, so you can actually show that this quantity behaves like K to the minus. Um, so we'll we'll come back to you we'll come back to that one. So here's a so the mu the mu is coming from right the mu depends on on your a this is a sort of a general result it depends on the mu that comes out of the a so if mu is equal to two. Then we're back to k minus 3, right? So things are looking okay. Good. That general result for power right. So, um, in general, you have to find mu, and that's just a, you know, that's something you have to do depending on your attachment kernel. So, uh, this is just how we defined it. We said, let's see if this is really true. Um, and again, this is just the definition of that normalization. So, and uh, 
things are a little bit better because we know we can clean this up a little bit. We know that this is where we're, we're saying that this is growing proportional to t. So we'll make it little mkt so these t's can cancel here. And so you get this uh, uh, expression. So this will have a bunch of mu sitting inside it, but in principle, this is how it should work, right? Yeah. Because we have an expression for n sub k, right? So this a sub k is coming out here, and this is the whole blob that you get for the little n sub k. So there's a mu here, a mu here, these guys can cancel, and there's a mu down here. So you have to show that this is so, I mean, so, so in principle, you've got a whole bunch of a's, as long as this is really true, that their sum grows like this, you stick them in here and you can solve them here. You may have to do it numerically. But it is a closed form expression, which is good. All right, those things happen. Uh, it's a closed form expression. Now and then you can solve for mu, and here's a fun little example. Um, uh, but it looks like this is sort of doable. It looks like with some messing around, this is kind of a doable thing. So here's a fun one. All right, so um, you may not think it's fun. So this is uh, a sub one is alpha. We're just going to fix it. We're just fixing it up. It's just some quantity alpha, and that's something that can be dialed between well anything you want, zero to infinity. It has to be a positive weight, uh, and then everything else is just going to grow like it did before. So the only change from the Barabasi model is we're going to change this attachment piece from somewhere to zero to infinity instead of one. Right? It was one before. So if it goes, alpha goes back to one, then everything should collapse back to where it were. So that's a very small change, but it's, it's, and it's doing it with, it's not the hubs, right? We're talking about what's the probability of attaching to someone who has one frame. Which you can see is going to, if you really dial this up, that is going to start to move the, the, the kind of network you're getting out quite a bit, right? Because you're starting to prefer to attach to these little, you know, everyone, everyone who appears, has one friend to start with. That's the nature of it. So you're always getting a new uh, character that has one friend. All right. Um, so this is a result in general. We find gamma is e plus one. And you end up with this uh, completely ridiculous thing that uh, mu over alpha is equal to the sum of gamma functions, ratios, um, which are beta function adjacent. And <coughs> A little bit more uh, pain involved, you actually end up with this. So you, you know, this is uh, you know, this is a kind of fun thing to do, but uh, this is to show you the oddness of the whole thing. So uh, you end up with just a simple little um, quadratic. So mu mu minus one is two alpha. So again, alpha is this dialable piece here, and you get mu is one plus this square root of one plus uh, eight alpha. So so it's an odd looking thing, but if alpha is one, square root of one plus eight is square root of nine. So three. So we get one plus three over 2, so it's 2, so mu equals 2, so it collapses back, very oddly, it collapses back uh, to where we were. Uh, and because this, the, the exponent could go between, um, uh, because mu, uh, sorry, uh, this mu is now dialable as a function of alpha, right? So alpha is 0, um, uh, then we have, right, alpha is 0, we have 1 plus 1 over 2, so it's 1. And alpha goes up to infinity, this whole thing goes up to infinity. So mu is going from 1 to infinity. So as we dial uh, alpha, we're getting the exponent to go between 2 and infinity. We don't get less than 2 between 2 and infinity. So we're getting the whole thing. That's totally good. All right, so we're mildly moving around. So we're just, so, I mean, to start with, we're just changing the attachment mechanism a little bit, just gently, and the exponent just starts to move away, right? Often what happens with parallels is that you, you might end up with, I mean, maybe some curtailing here or some curtailing here. This is starting to change the whole thing. And that's not, fuck this not. But it shows that this is not, you know, it's not, it's not, it's certainly, well, it's not universal and it's definitely, the, the details will matter. We still get our parallels, but the details matter. Okay, so this is a good place to stop, but I'll, I'll come back and we'll talk about, just briefly, we'll talk about these guys. On Thursday, we're going to have, um, we're going to move into Contagion. We're going to move into Contagion, which will be lots of fun. Yeah.